Borderlands is a series that I absolutely love. I picked the first game up years ago, not knowing a single thing about it, aside from what I read on the back cover. I just decided I'm going to give it a shot based on those words alone. And of all the games I've picked up without knowing anything about, it is definitely by far my favorite franchise. Then they released Borderlands 2. Only this time, you weren't the same people that you played as in the first one. It had all new characters, brought new concepts to the game, and frankly, I loved it even better than the first one. And then they released some DLC, including Gage. Oh, Gage. I put hundreds of hours into playing Gage. I, I still play Borderlands 2, and I still pick Gage almost every single... I can't break from it. Gage is a phenomenal character. And after that, the entire franchise just went down the drain. I actually don't know what the heck happened. I don't know if half the team left or something like that, but they started releasing progressively worse games and worse updates. Uh, they, they brought a lot of hope to me because I didn't really enjoy the pre-sequel all that much, but they did the Commander Lilith DLC that was just kind of tacked on to the end of Borderlands 2, added a lot of new content, and cost it absolutely nothing extra, which was super awesome, and it bridged the gap between Borderlands 2 and 3, and then Borderlands 3 launched. I pre-ordered the game, the highest version of the game, in fact. It was the first time I had ever pre-ordered a game that was higher than the base one because I, I thought that it was going to be absolutely fantastic. And I loaded it up. And I did play it for a few hours. And the gameplay was solid. But the story... It just... It just sucked. I, I don't know how else to say it. The story was not all that engaging. I didn't enjoy it all that much. The gameplay was polished and yet felt so boring. Like it wasn't as clunky as Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2 wasn't clunky at all, but 3 was very smooth and yet I didn't enjoy it. Maybe I'm just biased because Gage wasn't there and I always want to be Gage from now on, but still something just didn't quite feel right. I didn't even end up finishing the storyline and I can't even speak for the DLCs that I paid for and yet ultimately didn't even download. But now Borderlands 4, I guess, is coming out and I'm really, I'm kind of hopeful for it. I mean, they kind of delivered a couple disappointments in a row. Can they really mess up three? Third time's a charm. That's the saying, right? Like the third time, hopefully something will be good. And Apparently, there's a movie coming out, too. And I looked at the supposed cast list, and this is... this is wild. <laughs> I mean, we've got Jack Black, Jamie Lee Curtis, Kevin Hart, Bobby Lee, for some reason, as Larry? Who's Larry? I, you're probably wondering, who's Bobby Lee? Well, obviously, you, uh, you missed the Mad TV era. <laughs> Just ask my Dae Wu. Yes, that is right, Tank. Yo, Dae Wu, what kind of crimes are we solving today? I'm getting a little cramped in here. Can I come out? What? <laughs> Kenneth, what are you doing? I'm this close to touching a boo for real this time. It's very hot, and these wires are giving me a heart murmur. Heart murmur? I'm personally a firm believer that not everything needs to be a live action movie. With this one, I, I honestly. I don't think even Jack Black can sell me on it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure his performance will be great, but will it save the movie itself? I'm just, I'm not certain. I'm not positive that this is going to look great in a live action format. I mean, originally, when Borderlands was supposed to launch, it did have more realistic looking graphics, and they decided to go against it because it didn't fit too well with the theme. The cell shaded bit to it was a defining feature of Borderlands, and... Creating a live-action movie is going to essentially take that away again and show us, in a way, what Borderlands would have been if they hadn't gone that creative route. And I can't say that I'm particularly excited for that. Moving back to the gaming side of things, though, I'm being a bit unfair. I played Tiny Tina's Wonderlands very recently, actually. A little bit of it was even on my channel as highlights. And I gotta say, I had a lot of fun with that. I thought that it was solid, the comedic bits to it were really good, and I've yet to finish the thing, because I'm not the gamer that I used to be, but overall, I thought that it was a step in the right direction. So, for Borderlands 4, 
I'm not going to lie. I'm looking forward to it a little bit. But you're on thin ice, Gearbox, so you better listen to me. All right? My recommendations that I have for Borderlands 4. Me and the authority of my three viewers are on to you if you don't do every last thing that I tell you to do for this game. Starting with making all the previous characters playable. I don't care if some of them are dead. Spoiler alert. Alert. Spoiler alert for those that haven't played Borderlands 2, even though it's been out for like 10 years. Sorry, some of the characters are no longer alive. Making characters from previous games playable could be something you introduce after the first playthrough's done. Seems like a no-brainer. Just something that, you know, you have the understanding that the character may not canonically be part of it, but it's Borderlands, so it's silly, and it could just be a little fun. Create a compelling villain, and one that you don't feel like needs to have its reasoning justified. Handsome Jack was a fantastic villain. And, from our perspective in Borderlands 2, he just seemed like he was evil for the sake of being evil. And then we got to see a little bit of his past and how he came to be Handsome Jack. And to me, at least, that kind of ruined the whole tone of the franchise itself, because the whole point of it is that everything's a little over the top. Things are a bit cartoonish. Sometimes a villain is just a villain because they feel like being a jackass to everyone. Those influencer siblings from the third game, you wanted to kill them because they were just annoying. You didn't want them on the screen anymore. Handsome Jack. Now, you wanted to kill him because he was arrogant, egotistical, imposing, and just cocky as all get out constantly mocking you throughout the entire game and not in a way that made you feel like oh this guy's annoying i want him to shut up but in a way that made you think oh man this guy's got some good comebacks but he's gonna get what's coming to him soon i'm gonna shoot that smile right off of his face or well whatever he has under that mask and give us the actual voice actor for claptrap what a no-brainer one of the figureheads of the Borderlands universe. An annoying character in the way that you actually like. Claptrap was awesome. You have him basically showing up at the start of all of your Borderlands games, and you don't even keep the same voice actor? Are you kidding me? Finally, give us some familiar sets. Something that we've seen in previous Borderlands games. You know, one of the things that I always loved about the Fable games is that as the timeline progressed, you could revisit some areas that had existed in the previous games, but so much time had passed that the places were very different. Oftentimes, if it was a city, something like that, it's now ruins that you can explore. In Borderlands 2, we got to revisit the starting area in the first Borderlands game and see how it had been ravaged and completely changed thanks to the chaos that Handsome Jack had ensued. Something like that. Going back to even the starting area of the first Borderlands game in Borderlands 4, how cool would that be to see how the place has changed even more? Probably just fully abandoned because there's really nothing there and after Handsome Jack is out, what's the point of even being there anymore? So you can explore a massive array of abandoned areas just overtaken by monsters, whatever. You could see some wicked skags that have been mutated by all of the bile that was left behind thanks to Handsome Jack. There are so many cool things that they can do with Borderlands 4, and I really hope that they do. I hope that this game doesn't flop, because in this day and age in the gaming industry, a single mainline title flopping could spell the end for the entire company. If Borderlands 4 fails, Gearbox Software could just go under, and then Borderlands is done entirely. I don't want that. I want these franchises that make decent games. They make more good games than bad games at the very least. To stay afloat, I don't want it to be a make it or break it thing with every single game that comes out. So I want it to be something that is good and yet still ambitious because the first Borderlands game was ambitious. The second one was ambitious. Like they've, they've done consistently ambitious things throughout their history. But what do you guys think? Do you think Borderlands 4 is going to be good? Do you think the Borderlands movie starring Jack Black as Claptrap is going to be good? Let me know. I'm genuinely curious to know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you think that my ideas are pretty good and, you know, if Gearbox Software sees this, hey, if you don't put these into the game and you go under, I told you so. 
I'm just, I'm putting that out there right now. I told you so. We'll talk about this more as more details continue to develop with the topic. But for now, leave a like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you all next week. Bye.